What's good, Griffin13 here back in the day, and today, guys, we are here to give our first go at the brand new Top Gear Horizon special, the brand new Horizon story featuring Chris Harris. Honestly, guys, this is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what kind of challenges we have in store, because really how it looked like is it looks like this is almost like a mini DLC added into this game because not only are we getting this nice new story and of course you know we're gonna get some reward cars but those reward cars are absolutely brand new to the game and they are freaking amazing i can't wait to get my hands on them but right now let's go ahead and start off with our first story oh i'm so excited i'm so excited my dudes i really am i've been looking forward to this uh since they announced it i was i was so pumped really we didn't have that long of a wait though we only had like a day and a half Although, to be honest, by the time you guys are seeing this, it's going to be like three days since it came out. So, there is that. The season is changing on us. Is it putting us directly into, like, a uh, summer? I don't know. There it is. Tonight, the Stig drives some very fast farm equipment. I hail a taxi. And finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favorite around here. Hmm, what is our fan favorite? Oh, look at it, though. There we go. We got this Lotus on deck. What can we do with this Lotus? Oh, unfortunately. This is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Unfortunately, I just realized we've got the radio on. Oh, again, we're back at it. Ah, uh, yes, the Stig, our very own UFO. Unidentified fast object. The world's least obedient racing driver. So there we go, my dudes. We are off to a very interesting start. Based on the age-old roadster recipe: two seats, engine in the middle, rear-wheel drive. Not an ounce of fat. This is what driving is all about. Ooh, we almost didn't make it that time. Not the fastest way around a corner, but it's definitely the most entertaining. Yeah, look at this. It's a little drifty. This car is not planted like the normal Lotus. It's got a little bit of an upgrade to it. Now, I will say, apparently all these challenges require something special to try and beat it. We're going to go ahead and do these, like, straight off the bat, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'll do them, uh, I'll, I'll do them by myself, like, in the kind of cheeky way. Ah! No, we hit a car. We hit a car. Good thing we're going around this corner, though. It weighs well under 700 kilos and makes 190 horsepower from its 1.8 liter engine, which drives to 8,000 RPM. Just listen to that. It does sound very, very good. I will say that. It does not sound too terribly bad. Not like some of the other cars in this game. I kind of like this engine noise. I kind of like it right now. Oh, boy. Come on. Avoid that car. There we go. So, we have to do this in like a minute and 40. And right now, we're at a minute 30. We got 2.2 miles to go. So, that already tells you right now. Following this route is a terrible idea. It is absolutely god awful. I did. I will say this. I saw a sneak peek. Philosophy of the man who founded the company, Colin Chapman. Simplify then add lightness. He said the Sport 90 also adds a full roll cage, just in case. So what I was saying is, I saw a little bit of a sneak peek on Twitter. Somebody had posted that if you want to get three stars on this, literally just turn around at the star. Just go the other way. And you should be good to go. All right, but there we go. We got a mile left to get to the finish line. We took the long way round. Oh, boy. There we go. Two minutes, 15. We're about to hit two stars. We are not going to get that three star because we did not do, it, do the cheeky pleb shit. Oh, boy. Here we go. Almost there. The Series 1 Elise is, after all, one of the best handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work and across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. I'm actually very excited about that, but what we're going to do is, because we only got two stars, we are going to do the other way. Because some of you might be a little bit confused by this. But from what I've heard is literally just do this. Just turn around. Turn around. Every now and then we get a little bit hungry and there's nothing good around. Turn around. Every now and then we get a little bit faster. I don't know. 
fast way around the corner, but it's definitely the most entertaining. What, the little drifty? Is that what you're getting at, Chris? Is that what you're getting at? Oh, through the fields. That's it. The honorable art of drifting. I'm not trying to drift, though. That's the thing. Oh, get 90. Oh, my God. Completely sideways now. Making it look easy, too. Oh, God. I don't know which way to go. Hold on. I got to open the map here for a second. I got to open the map for a second. Okay, so that's our destination. So we need to go left. All right, we need to go left here. Turn left at the fork. Except then we messed it up and we don't. We, 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 we checked a little too late there. All right, here we go, though. Ah! Ah, no! No! We need to stay at 90. This thing is like... They, they threw some, like, badass negative camber on the back of this thing. Or something. Because this car does not like to turn like it normally does. I've, I've driven this car quite a bit. And this thing is handled like a sloth. Oh my god. Well, they did say to use the fastest route possible. And if there's one thing faster than a racing line, it's a straight line. So you've got to hand it to the stick. Made it. Oh, 136! 136! There it is! Yes! That's three stars! Handling cars ever made. The Sport 190 is its hardcore cousin, a road-going racer you can drive to work. And across fields, it turns out. But if it's true agricultural transport you're after, we have just the thing. But let's be honest, like, I, I don't know what it is. They have done something to that car that make it handle like a, like a, I, I don't know how to put it. I, I really, really don't. It, it did not feel very good. Like, I know that car and it just did not feel right. It did not feel right at all. But we got our wheel spin. We pick up a 2016 Cadillac ATSV, which is not too bad. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next challenge. Our first one was Welcome to the Festival. The Horizon Festival is in the UK this year, and Top Gear presenter Chris Harris and the Stig are there to see what it's all about. Some say he is a mascot. Others claim that he drinks Gatorade. I don't know where I'm getting with this. I, I don't know. But it's not the Stig. It is the Stig's digital cousin. But there we go. We got faster than 87.2. The Stig takes on the Top Gear Track Tool, a 500 brake horsepower racing tractor, and Chris Harris wants his car back. All right, so we need to hit 124 miles per hour in order to get three stars. So what is this? Is this a, uh, a speed trap or a speed zone or something? Ooh, a BMW 1M. Great car. Hang on. That's my BMW 1M. And we are going to thrash it around and immediately crash into an ice cream cone. Seriously, not funny. Who gave Stick the keys? Ooh, okay. So I see this. Uh, we have to park at the desig designation without exceeding the damage limit. Although we just about got it quite a bit there. The stick smells like onions. Okay. I will say this. I hate I hate to kind of put it this way. Please leave me some tread for the drive home, Stiggy. Seriously. Come on. One of my co-workers today he brought in uh he brought something into my office. It was uh his hard hat, right? And he's like, I don't know what's going on, my hard hat is delaminating. And I flipped that sucker over to find out the expiration date on it because I was thinking maybe it's expired, you know, something along these lines. No, it turns out he was just spraying it with, like, uh, some dissolving chemicals and he didn't realize it. But the thing is, though, is, oh, my God, it reeked. Oh, my God, it reeked. I guess you could say, oh, they stink. Oh, man, it was nasty. <laughs> nasty, nasty, nasty. But we're, we shouldn't be talking about that. You know, it's going to smell of onion. Oh, my God. That car scared the bejeebus out of me. Yeah, we're getting a little drifty here. It's not bad. I do like these 1Ms. But why would you buy a 1M? 
Like, I, I know that he is, uh... Like, it, it's a fun little car, but for, like, the same cost, you could get a decently used, like, M3, or an M5 even, in uh, some respects, or Audis, or Mercedes, all kinds of things. And I feel like Chris Harris could probably afford a little bit more than just this 1M. I will say, though, it is... It is a cool little car. It is a cool little coupe. I do like how they look. In fact, actually, I always thought the, the front end was one of the best front ends BMW's ever done. So I will say, look-wise, it's not bad at all. We're going to take the exit here. Crash through a fence. Yeah, we keep throwing this thing all over the place. I mean, look at this. Look at that. We're, we're just throwing it everywhere. All right, we got 0. .7 miles to go. We got over a minute left to get there, but uh, I think I'm in the wrong lane. I think I'm in the wrong lane. Oh, oh God, cheeky boys! Oh, what a shame! I was really getting into that. Just park it up now, stick, and mind the curbs. Right, back to the actual script now, if you don't mind. This is Top Gear's track tour. It's a tractor, obviously, but with a 5.7-litre Chevy V8 making 500 horsepower. And here comes the Stig again. Farm Stig. Born in a barn, they say. Weaned by pigs. Can plow a field in under six seconds. There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumor has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. I reckon it will go even faster. So some say he doesn't care what the Secretary of Agriculture says. Others claim he plows his fields a little too quickly. All we know is he's called the Stig. Stigginson. Farmer Stig. So there we go. We've already reached 130. And we're at cruising speed here. So 130 will get us three stars. Ooh, we did just crash into that car. But look at the downforce. Look at the wing. It's got a, such a big-ass wang. It is going to definitely be a member of Steady. Black Panther's big wang gang. Which mud tires, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. So here's the thing. I've actually driven a tractor. I'm curious. That, oh, do they have an actual proper, like, pedal set up? So... On the tractors I've driven, it's honestly just a little metal rod. Oh, we need to drop gear and speed up a little. Right, here comes the speed camera. Hope they put some film in it. No! No, we didn't reach the speed! That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. Did he just say spread slurry in a hurry? Oh, that's gross. That is gross. If you guys don't know what slurry is, it's basically poop water. It is nasty. It is so nasty. Right. Here comes the speed camera. Hope they put some film in it. Whoa! Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now, though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. So there we go. I just went ahead and redid it. It actually took me a couple of tries to do that. Um, what was weird, though, is when I actually crossed the finish line, I was only going 123, but it gave me 124, so I'm not too mad about that. But there we go. We got three stars. I'm okay with that. That tractor, I'm sure it can get more power. I'm sure it can get more power. They put a LS1 motor in it. I want to see... What it could do with the new Corvette Z R one motor that puts out an additional 250 horsepower over what's in that one currently. Ooh, I just saw an award that I am super excited about. I cannot wait to get that car. That is going to be one hell of a thing. Oh my god. But let's move on into the next challenge now. I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for this next one. Come on, is this what I'm thinking it is? So the, uh, it, it's not, it's not, it's the challenge after this. Up next, though, what we have is the Austin F Extreme. The stick finds out what happens when you put a racing V12 in a taxi, and Chris Harris changes the rules. We have to do it in 1 minute 14 seconds, 
And it looks like we're probably going to be borrowing a taxi from Aisha. I called a cab earlier. Local company, Aisha's Taxis. Excellent service. Got me here in no time. Unsurprising, really. I mean, look at what turned up. Hands down, the quickest cab I've ever been in. Which got me thinking, how fast could this thing actually go? So I had a word with Aisha. Asked if we could borrow her cab for a trip to the seaside. To Bamborough Beach, in fact, where we could stretch the taxi's legs a bit. Although, I might have forgotten to tell her who'd be driving. You've guessed it. The cabbie who'll always get you to your destination very early, but probably won't be anywhere near where you asked to go. Those tires must be worn now. Surprise less than a month piece, to be honest. Just Some say he drinks a little bit too much coffee and has a special ingredient, while others also claim that he never follows the most direct route. It's not the Stig, but it's the Stig's cab driving cousin. Now that's what I call a cab. No clattery diesel engine here. This has a V12 with over 750 horsepower, plus bucket seats. Feeded bucket seats, presumably. So I've actually kind of missed this cab. Driving this thing was a lot of fun, and I kind of want to, like, make one of these that's got a bunch of downforce and all that, and actually be able to, like, handle through the corners, From like, really on, well. All cabs should have wide bodies and flared arches. Think about it. More stability, more speed, more downforce, more room for your terrified passengers. Yeah, but try driving a wide-body cab with a V12 engine through the middle of London. Probably not the greatest idea ever. It even has slick tires for maximum grip on a bone-dry drag strip. So they should be interesting when we hit the beach. Well, it is also a little wet here on the on the road. It's been a little interesting just driving to the beach. So we have a rear-wheel drive V12 taxi on the dirt in the rain. Now we're driving it through a puddle. Probably not the best environment for this car. Ah, uh, yes, another dreary day at the beach. Welcome to the United Kingdom. Good work from the stick there. I'd say we're nicely warmed up for the next bit. So here we are then. In the old days, daredevils used smooth, sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go. Many early land speed records were set on beaches. Miles of space, nothing to hit. Sounds easy, right? Yeah, sounds plenty oh, easy until, uh, you hit, uh, you hit some kid's digging pile where he was building a sandcastle. But that's the challenge here. Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. There's something he hasn't told us yet. What would that be? Because we're going plenty fast enough to get three stars. Speed record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction. Oh no! Out, which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn. Which, of course, is when the handbrake comes in handy. You cheeky pleb! You cheeky, cheeky pleb! Oh, we're not going to get three stars now. <laughs> We have 14 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Fuck. Yeah, we're not going to make it. Fuck. Come on. Come on, you cheeky mother. We, we weren't even slowing down. <laughs> we didn't even get one star. We got one star. Maximum speed. I know who I'm calling. And all of this off road action. Has given me an idea. We'll get to that here in a little bit, but we have to retry that. Chris, you cheeky, you cheeky Nando. Ugh. I, I, I mm. All right, so we are approaching the destination. Half a mile left to go. At about a hundred yards, we're gonna mash the brakes. Rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction, before the clock runs out. 
Which no, we're spinning! Off the world's swiftest U-turn, which of course is when the handbrake comes in handy. If we can get up to speed without spinning so much, we might make it! Come on, power! We have 10 seconds. We're not gonna do it again, are we? Because we spun out. Oh, dear God. Nope, there it goes. We'll get two stars this run. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear God. Not just sand, it's wet sand. Like, it is very, very tricky. It is very, very tricky. All right, we're going to go at 300 yards this time. 400, I mean. That was too soon. 300 yards would have done it. Okay, so I just did a run, and it actually glitched out completely. I got to the destination. It told me to go to the next destination, but somehow it didn't register. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going... We're not going to use the handbrake at all. Speed record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction, before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn, which of course is when the handbrake comes in handy. Because I feel like if we use the handbrake, what would end up happening is we would lose too much speed. Doing a nice little U-turn like that, hopefully this is going to be in our benefit. Oh, we got 10 seconds left. Can we do it? Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, we've done it! Yes! Yes! Maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off-road action has given me an idea. All right, now we get to do the off-road action. I'm happy about that. Let's move on. So up next, we have the steed goes up and down some hills, and Chris Harris looks for badges in all the off-road you can eat. A T. For those of you guys who are unaware, I'm in love with this car. I honestly think this is the dopest looking thing ever. I wish I had the money to do this. In fact, I wanted to do this to my first car, which was a 1994 Mercedes C220. This is this, on the other hand. E -A -T. That's E A T for E Class All Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though mostly badgers still there's definitely some terrain lots of it all you need is a good sense of direction or not here's stig again looking lost terrified of maps apparently inner compass points directly south the eat has a silky smooth v6 diesel it'll do 155 miles an hour on the road but where we're going we won't need roads first up it's a trip to the top of glen rannock by any means necessary and against the clock naturally but don't worry, it has knobbly tires and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tires. In 400 yards, so for three stars, we need to do it in five minutes in 10 seconds, which I think is going to be fairly doable. But as we are the Stig, some say, like a bird, he knows when to go north and when to go south. Others, on the other hand, claim that the mud gives him a little bit of a fear since he is so used to the track. And that is called the Stig. I messed that up so bad. I messed that up so bad. The EAT has four wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. Ancient burial mounds? Why are you driving this car over ancient burial mounds? Do you want it to be cursed? Do you want the car to be cursed? Now, the only thing I don't like about this is the massive antennas on it. I could do without them. I could do without the massive antennas. Honestly, though, it, it's still an amazing little, little car. Actual air suspension. Turn sharp left. Because I will say, like I was saying earlier, my 1994 Mercedes, the first thing I wanted to do to it, I kind of wanted to rice it out a little bit, you know, slam it down to the ground, find a body kit for it. Back then, the wide body kits really weren't the thing, so I couldn't really find anything at all for it. In fact, there wasn't even really a whole lot of just like, you know, regular 
front bumper, rear bumper, side skirt kits available. It was mostly just, yeah, it, it, it was not the greatest thing in the world. So here's the thing. We're now about ready to enter into the off-road bits. Uh, we are going to cross the stream. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. Gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. So here we go. We're going to go uphill now. We got the big knobby tires. Meaning this should be very, very easy. Just cut across the hilltop. There we go. And that is the destination. Now it's time to head way over there to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up? Oh god, they are cheeky as fuck! Completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Turn around. No, that was not the goal though, to go completely sideways. We were not trying to do that. Oh my god, 5.2 miles. What is with these final destination sort of shits? Like, I, I was driving so nice and calm, thinking, oh, we only have five minutes to get there. We can do that. Easy. No problem. Why is this a challenge? And now we gotta go way off the beaten path and not run into any damn trees. Damn it, these trees. These motherfucking trees, man. They, they, they're killing me, Smalls. They're killing me. So we've got a minute and 20 seconds to get there. It's 3.6 miles on the road. Comforts the EAT charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer can ever need. It has an espresso machine in here. Sacre bleu, Ricky Bobby. I'm going to drink my espresso. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's all I think about whenever someone's like, there's an espresso machine in this car. I just, I just think of that. I just think of that, uh, that Talladega Nights movie and his opponent having the espresso machine in his car. Was that a... Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No! No, there's a wall! There's a wall! An unbreakable wall! Okay, we need to find a way around that. So it looks like there's another route over here. Oh, come on. Damn walls. Damn it. In 400 yards, turn right. Can we, no, we can't drive all the way through. Damn it. In 200 yards, turn right. Oh, we are not going to make it, are we? All these adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel. And there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. There's got to be an alternate route. There has got to be an alternate route. We, uh, we kind of suck there. I was thinking we'll, we'll be able to go across road country and we'll be able to get there in no time. No. No, we didn't. We're going to have to look at the map before we leave next time. Oh, my gosh. Why? Why does this... They have made this an actual challenge. Like, some of the other stories have just been like, oh, yes, this is not any problem at all. But this one, they trick you. They say, oh, by the way, I know you're going 200 miles an hour in one direction. Come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it, my boy. Yes! There you go. In Top Gear fashion, we are just going to throw in and hope for the best. We made it to the destination. And there we go. The top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. 
Well, unfortunately, I gotta stick around and redo that. I'm not gonna bring you all along for the entire trip. But we're gonna have to take a look at the map and find out how to do this faster. Alright, we're gonna start off with the map. I just, I was, I didn't want to start off with the map right away. So, basically, following the road is the best route from here. At this point, we need to cut across this field. And then, just keep on cutting across and just get up the mountain. From there, our best bet is to come down here, hit the highway, and get over to this point. Somehow. So, driving through Edinburgh, like right through there. Not going off cross country. We just need to get back down here to this road. And I think we should be good to go. So let's try that. We're going to see if this works. Power! Time to head way over there to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. All right, so we made it to the first destination in less than two and a half minutes. That gives us a lot more time to That's get there. Four wheel drive car on mud tires completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Oh, come on, keep it together, keep it together. Yards. Yes, there we go. So that's our first road that we need to cross. We need one other road. Oh, that's a lot of air. That is a lot of air. So then after that, what we need to do is we need to hit this highway. And we need to take it through Edinburgh. All the way to Arthur's seat. Oh, we are so close! We have, we're have we gonna make it! We're gonna make it! Yes! That worked! Our route worked! Just barely making it in time with 15 seconds to spare! No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. Whoo! That was a hell of a challenge. That was a hell of a challenge. Honestly, they're going to have to make these easier, I think. I think they are going to have to make them easier because I consider myself to be, like, above average. And I'm having a hell of a time trying to beat these. And I can already see, like, some of the newer players having a really tough time getting some of these cars. Like, this thing right here, oh my gosh, I love it. But my god... <laughs> Was it a bitch and a half to get it to where we needed it to go? I love this thing, though. We are definitely going to use this quite a bit more. Anyway, though, that is where we're going to go and wrap things up for today. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what do you guys think of the EAT. Project EAT for short. I love this thing. This is one of those projects that, honestly, I see it and I just go, man, I wish more people would do stuff like this. Because, honestly, it's a four-wheel drive. It's a Mercedes. You just don't expect somebody to make an off-road version of it, and I love it to death. I really, really do. I think this is one of the coolest builds out there. As well, if you guys want to, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at twitter.com forward slash girl 413 and instagram.com forward slash girl 413 If you guys like this video, go make sure to hit that like button down below for us, because you guys already know your support is so greatly appreciated. And make sure to subscribe for more videos coming out all the time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.